Hey there! I hope everybody's doing good today. I just got back from Asheville, North Carolina, or Black Mountain, which is right nearby, and um, I had just a full long weekend of, I did oil painting classes, which is not my comfort level. <clears throat> I've been an acrylic artist for about 20 years. And I also, it was just a weekend full of spiritual um, connection and just really contemplating and uh, rejuvenation and all that stuff all mixed into one. So it was quite an emotional weekend for me. Just very uh, thought pr provoking and just some really deep thinking about myself and my art career and the way I'm going, the direction I'm going and that kind of thing and I just really feel uh, the affirmation that I am on the right path. I want to reach lots of people and teach a lot of people the joy of using acrylic paints um, to learn how to be an artist and to learn how to, to make beautiful things. It's just extremely therapeutic and I want everybody to be able to experience that and so I didn't post a lot of videos last week that were um, acrylic pours. It was more of the artwork that I had done prior to my festival over the last weekend before I had participated in a festival. So that was quite draining as well, preparing for a festival and the hard work that went into all that. And um, I'm getting a new studio. This I, I own it now. And I am going to be shifting all of my stuff from my home into the studio, which is 30 minutes away. So it's going to be quite a challenge to get it all done. But I still want to be able to make videos for you and to create artwork for you. And so just uh, hang there with me for these next few weeks as I transition from my home studio and my kitchen to my real studio where I have actual space to spread out and spread my wings and you to be a part of that and hopefully to encourage some of you across the world if you're an artist and you're doing this and you're not quite sure how to you know, move forward I'm hoping I can encourage you to step forward and take that leap of faith and put your total trust in God so what I'm going to do today is a deco art uh, pouring. I'm going to use all deco art products and I'm not going to use silicone or OGX which I typically love to do and I love cells but today I'm going for a uh, I'm going to do a dirty pour I guess in a, a sink strainer but I'm going to spin so I'm really, really excited about this. I'm hoping it's not going to make a huge mess. I'm going to kind of try to take it slow. I have a metal Lazy Susan that's on ball bearings. And um, I've got a round wood base that is mounted to that that's the same size as the Lazy Susan, which is about 10 inches. And then I've just got cardboard under my canvas. This is a 16 by 20, so there's a piece that is fit in underneath my canvas to keep it flat and then I have a piece of cardboard you can see that's sticking out on either side and that's going to be where I, be, I am able to touch it and move it. I don't have this part worked out yet. This is just the beginning stages but I just had to try one of these spinning sink strainer pours because they look so pretty when everybody else does it. But also just wanted to show you, you know how I use butcher paper and how you can just peel your paint right off the table after it dries if it's thick enough. Now if it's super thin and you wiped it down, it's going to make your butcher paper look dirty but you can still use it. It just doesn't look that pretty. But like here are, I just had to show you these pieces and I've got them on parchment paper because if you let them touch each other like this one is on top and I'm surprised I can even get it off usually when the paint touches itself it will stick and you cannot get it undone 
But I just wanted to show you, these were drips from my pour last week. And there's some there. And I thought this was really beautiful. This was from um, my breast cancer pours, the pink, hot pinks and all, but mostly the reds and hot pinks. And there's some uh, rose gold in there, but some really pretty patterns. So I take everything I possibly can after it, if, after it dries and I've left it on the table. I peel it up and stick it on like here. Yeah, see, you get it. if you touch them, you have a really big chance of not being able to separate it. Here's more drips. You know, this is just, you know, it's purple, like a purple and red. Oh, that was for my, uh, my ribbon pour that I did that I just absolutely loved. And then, you know, here's other, these came out of the foil pan where I, you know, catch my drips. So these are a lot thicker, like there's all kinds of colors underneath. They're kind of layered up, but on the top, you can see kind of a striped pattern. So I do try to keep as much as I can. And I, you have to put it on wax paper or parchment or paper or something to keep everything separated. Otherwise, if they touch each other, they will stick like you can never get it off. So again, I, I've got a 16 by 20 canvas. And so the, I think the key point with any spin is to have it centered. And I think I have it centered. This is really hard to tell because of the way I've got it laid out. The other thing is to have a level and just, you know, make sure that you're level, you know, as far as that goes, because you don't want to, you know, tilt any certain way. It's always nice to have a small level around. So I'm using Deco Art Pouring Medium. And the, on here, the ratio is one to one with their deco art paints. So I wanted to show you the colors. I've got, I didn't have the regular Americana um, black. So this is black tie and it's a satin finish. And I just wanted to show you, it's not really black black. It's almost like a navy black. I often use Artist Loft White and Black, and Artist Loft Black is a lot darker than this black. But this is kind of navy, and that's okay for what I'm doing. I've got uh, Dioxazine Purple, which is the deepest purple that they you know, have there, which I love. And then I've got a medium toned Purple Rain, True Blue, Peacock Teal. And the last one I'm going to mix for you, and so you can see how I do it, is Sour Apple. So those are the colors I'm using. And white, titanium white. And I've got a larger cup of white because I always use more white than I do anything else. So I've got roughly an ounce to ounce and a half of Sour Apple in my cup. And I'm going to take my, you know, I did shake it a little bit to get it stirred up. And I'm going to put the same amount so that I basically have about three ounces of mixture in my cup. So if I were adding silicone to this mixture, I would be doing a drop per ounce. So I'd be adding three drops of silicone to this cup, but I don't want cells. So I'm not adding silicone or OGX, which OGX is my favorite thing by far, hands down for cells. Um, I'm not using that today because I don't want cells. I just want to see if I can get a really pretty sink strainer pour. But I am going to do it like a dirty pour and I'm never quite sure how it's going to turn out when I do it that way. I like the sink strainer pours where you kind of just pour the petals of color in one at a time. But that's harder to do when you're spinning it. I think it will be easier for me if I am just pouring straight out of one container. So that's why I'm going to do a dirty pour. So I'm going to remove these sticks. And I've got 
just a to-go cup from Cracker Barrel. That's going to be my uh, what I pour into. So again, one to one pouring medium to paint. So I'm going to start, you know, whatever's at the bottom will come out last. So I think I want lighter colors to come out at the very end. So I'm going to start with a little white. This sour apple. And I need about 12 ounces of paint to cover this canvas. So I'm just keeping that in mind. I think this is a 20 ounce cup, so I need over half of a cup of paint. So I think right here I'm going to do the lighter purple. And I'm going to throw in the, uh, a little bit of black there. The deep purple. It's looking pretty in the cup. Really pretty. Um, maybe do a little bit more white. And I'm just going to do a pinch kind of in the reverse. a little bit of the colors but in the reverse. Kind of looks like the green is taking over. I don't know. So a little bit of white. This is more more paint than I need. But we're gonna see what happens. A little bit of black. So I didn't put a whole lot of black. I have no idea what this is going to look like, but this should be enough paint to totally cover this canvas. So I am going to... This is a 16 inch canvas and I got a 15 inch ruler. I'm going to take a pencil. This is about midway point here. And then this is 20 inches down, so I need to go to 10. So that's about my center point right there. And I'm just marking that because sometimes when you're looking at a triangle, I mean a, a rectangle or whatever, even if you're looking at a circle, it's kind of hard to see the center point. So that's why I'm marking it. So I'm going to lay my strainer right there in the middle. And I'm going to make sure that I can totally spin this canvas without it banging anything, touching anything, that kind of thing. And so what I'm going to try to do is pour this and keep it spinning. So this will be interesting to see what happens. I've never done this before. And so here we go. Okay, so it definitely got off whack there. That's funny. That's too funny. Mm, I have no idea. Let's see, I've gone. My canvas has slid. I'm going to keep spinning just to see if it helps the paint go out. I'm going to double check, see if, how much space I've got there. See, it's, it's gotten off center. I'm going to take this out of the middle. So 
So surprisingly, I did not expect, but maybe because I put white and black in there, is it's very muted. There's not a lot of separation of colors. So I'm just going to take it. I'm going to go ahead and take it off of this. The spinning thing was not that successful for this size. So I think what I'm going to do is get my foil pan out here and I think I'll go ahead and put just a little white in the corners. because those are always the areas that are harder to cover when you're working with a rectangular area. I do have push pins underneath the canvas. So this may be one of those that I just play with and totally turn it into something different, you know. And I don't have silicone in it. Keep that in mind. So I'm just going to kind of tilt this way and that way. So I'm getting some cells that are popping up even though I don't have anything in it to make cells. And I'm going to let the weight of the paint take it that way. This is definitely one of those boring, boring pores that doesn't have any personality to speak of at all. So you know I'm going to have to do something to it. So I think what I'm going to do is just lay it down and think this out. I'm going to bring my colors back over here and I'm going to come up with something. I'm going to leave the black out. Come up with something to incorporate it back into this pattern if I can. So I do have my little handy palette knife. Oh, before I go any further, I'm putting a drop of silicone in this purple. I'm going to scrape this back into the cup. It'll change the color a little bit because there's white, but that's okay. But I do want silicone in something now that now that I've done this and there's not anything I can really do to make it look like a sink strainer pour overall. I'm just going to try to turn it into something that's maybe florally looking. I don't know. This is the fun part sometimes is just playing, enjoying the process of creating. It's that is what is so th soothing and therapeutic for me is just to paint. It's to just get going and do it. Don't let things hold you back from doing it. Just do it. Because I know that that's what I was created to do was to do art. There's no doubt in my mind at all. So this is just going to be a big experiment. So now I'm going to put some of this purple rain. I'll go ahead and put one drop in here too. Give it a quick stir.
And I'm not going to put silicone in this one. I'm going to put some of this. I think it's peacock teal. We're going to see what happens here. So every time I swipe, I always wipe off. So that's what I'm going to do. So you don't bring the color here back over into here. It's just a good rule of thumb when you're swiping. I'm very, very lightly skimming the surface and then kind of twisting it and bringing the blade into a point when I get it to the, towards the center. Just trying to get some paint back in those lighter areas. But I can come back and put some paint in there too. And for the wider ones, I'll have to make two passes. Which is okay. I just like to do acrylic pours. I like to do something a little bit unusual. I, you know, I do love to do just general acrylic pours, but I also like to see if I can take it to a different area of acrylic art. You know, I just want to explore and see what I can do with it. It's just such a fascinating way to paint with acrylics. So I'm getting here to this last area. And put some, put some purple back on those big blobs of white. I'm going to try to bring it over just a little bit here. This ended up being very gray looking because of the colors mixing together. And that's something that you kind of just have to experience on your own. Um, you know, by trying the colors and trying different combinations of colors. It's just kind of seeing what happens there. Okay, so... Again, just very softly skimming the surface. Because that way, when I do that, it's keeping these purples and so forth on top, which is what I want to do to give it some boldness because it's so muted underneath. So I'm trying to very softly keep that bold color that I have on the corners and edges, keep it there. So this is all a big puddle here in the corner. So I'm just going to try to Squeeze it on over here. I'm going to, yeah, since I had some on my palette knife. But see, if I put it back down without going, taking it off of my palette knife, it puts that grayish color back where you're swiping the next time. And you don't want to muddy up your colors. I'm going to stick some color back here. 
like where the white is it's like the white of the canvas because my palette knife went too close to the surface and you can't you can't that's why you have to put very little pressure because if you put a lot of pressure it's going to take your paint right down to the canvas and scrape everything off that is there so I like this and I don't have a lot of the deep purple left so I'm trying oops there's a hair in that so I'm trying to salvage the deep purple if I can Trying to figure out where that hair went that's why I keep skewers around they're fun to drag through your paint but they also are good for lifting things out So, the little bit of purple I have, I'm going to try to get some along the edges here. And that is like straight down to the canvas, so I'm just dabbing some color in. So here, I'm going to take the OGX again. And I'm going to do one drop in the... What color was this? Peacock Teal. I'm going to use this green to stir just a few times. So I've got the little bit of purple rain left, so I'm going to put it on the edge. And leave myself some paint in there. And I'm going to do it back this way because I can swipe kind of towards me, I think, a little better than I can the way I had it. It's easier to swipe towards you than to swipe away from you, in my opinion, for me. So here I'm going to add the lighter peacock teal and some lime. And a little bit of white, just a little bit can't really control it when you're pouring in from a cup. That's why I love squeeze bottles. And this, this paper towel is saturated. So I'm just going to take this one here. So I'll have something to wipe with. Oh yeah, so there it starts to glow because of that green and turquoise and white underneath. Oh, that's pretty. So I've got to figure out how to incorporate that in um, from the other angles as well somehow. I've got a lot of paint on the canvas here. That is so pretty.
Okay, what shall I do? I'm going to see. I'm going to see. Experiment time. I can bring out this beautiful bright color that I have going on there in the opposite way somehow. Okay, let me see how I'm going to do this. I've got this little pointy See, with palette knives, you got to just be so gentle because it is so easy to go below the surface of the paint. And that's where you bring that mud back out again. I'm just going to keep working with it till I get it where I like it. I don't want it to become grayed up. That's what I'm concerned about is that those muted colors will kind of overtake. So I'm trying to keep that white. I 
going to get the white there. But I don't know. So, here's my starburst effect, I guess you might would say. Could call it that, maybe. Starburst effect. Can even take some color and softly go over that purple. I'm just kind of pushing and pulling these colors. All right, I like that better with the blues and the turquoise and the green coming and popping on top of that purple. I like that better. So it's just like a starburst firework kind of effect. Um, I'm content with it. It's not what I had envisioned in my mind, but I'm good with it. I like, I love the colors. There's no doubt in my mind, I love the colors. So you watched me live on YouTube totally be unsuccessful at a sink strainer pour that was spinning. But I had fun, fun, fun. I always have fun when I paint. It doesn't matter if I don't even come up with something that's in my mind. Just the joy of doing it creating. And there's always the chance that someone will see this and fall in love with it. And if they fall in love with it and want it, then it'll be in their home and that will be what makes me happy. Because I sell everything I paint. I never really talk about that much, but you can always find my artwork on my website. And if it's something that you want, but you can't quite afford it, I can always work with you on payments. And, you know, I, I like to work with people to make them happy. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, that was all deco art colors and pouring medium. And I started with no silicone, but then after the unsuccessful spinning sink strainer, I did add the OGX coconut milk, which is in my Amazon link below the video. Everything that I use is in that Amazon link below my video. And so you can find it there. And um, 
You can, uh, if you'd like to make a donation, you can go to PayPal, and I'm always appreciative of any donations from PayPal. And I have a Patreon page, and I've got, I've got a small group of people that are following me and going to follow me on my journey, and that makes me feel wonderful, and to be able to share with them on a more personal level. So I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, just learn how to play and have fun, and don't be so hard on yourself. So I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me that thumbs up, like it, and make sure to click on the bell at the bottom right if you want to be notified when I load new videos. Have a great day. Thank you.